Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Get Let's Get Live with Dracina Wines. And today we are going to be talking about understanding the diversity of bubbles. Because all bubbles are not created equally. Now this doesn't mean that one method of making sparkling wine is better than another. It just literally means that bubbles are put into the wine in a variety of different ways. So through different techniques, we get to open a bottle of wine that there's pressure in there and beautiful bubbles to help us enjoy the evening. Now there's a few typical ways that bubbles can be added to uh, the sparkling wine. We have the traditional, the tank, which, you know, and then we have CO2 addition. So before we get into how we get the bubbles into the wine itself, we need to discuss the bit about this base wine because always, always the wine starts off the same way with that same base wine. Okay, so the winemaker makes the wine similar to any other still wine that you are familiar with. The main difference is that the timing of harvest, it's typically harvested, the fruit is typically harvested a bit earlier than if we were harvesting for an actual still wine. And the reason why we do this is to guarantee that the sugar levels are there so that the yeast can eat up and that we have higher acidity. Now, although Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are kind of the most popular fruit to be used in sparkling wines, in reality, we can make sparkling wine from any grape variety that we want. And interestingly enough, the more you get into sparkling wine, you're gonna find wines that are from a whole bunch of different grape varieties. We can have Viognier, we have Cunoise, we have Grenache. You can make it pretty much from anything as long as you're adding bubbles to it. So we're gonna start off with Champagne region, okay? So depending on the region that the wine is made from, different varieties are common, or even in some regions, required. So for example, in Champagne, there are eight permitted grape varieties that can be grown. Now people typically just think of Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. However, there's more that can be um, allowed into a Champagne. So we have Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Petit Messler, and Arbane. And then the eighth grape variety that is always kind of forgotten about is Voltis. And it's interesting because that is the region's first authorized hybrid grape. Now, if we move to a different region, if we move to Spain, similarly to Champagne, the Prosecco, re I'm sorry, to Italy, <laughs> I've got the wrong map up, okay, wrong map. Um, similar to Spain, we have, um, in Italy, we have the Prosecco region, and its requirement is that it, the grape variety is Glera. So in order to be labeled as Prosecco, the wine must be made from 85% from the Glera grape. And then that remaining 15% can be made of any combination of accepted varieties such as Verdiso, Bianchetta, Chavillerano, Perero, and Glera Lungo, in addition to our typical Chardonnay and then Pinot Bianco or Pinot Grigio. Now, if we go back to where I was before, our Spain, and we talk about the D.O. of Cava. So in Cava, it is usually made from a blend of three different grapes, Jarello, Macabeo, and Parieta. And these grapes, like Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Monastrell, are also allowed. So we can blend these in to that and be allowed to be called Cava. Now, other regions like the Loire Valley, they make their sparkling wine from Chenin Blanc. Germany is famous for their Sept, which means it is a Riesling-based sparkling. So, and like I said earlier, we can see sparkling from anything. Albarino, Cunoise, Val de Gay, right? And of course, the all-important Cabernet Franc. Now, let's get into how we can make bubbles. So the main three ways of making bubbles is the first one is uh, typically the cheapest way to do this. And this is basically just by adding CO2. So all sparkling wine goes through that second step to create the bubbles. 
And in this method, the CO2 addition is just literally pumping in carbon dioxide to the wine while the pro while it is in a contained tank. And as they are pushing it in, bubbles get in there. And so you're pretty much making Coke or Pepsi, okay? So honestly, if you wanted to make sparkling wine on your own, go ahead, go get that soda stream and you are good to go. Put some wine underneath it, pop it on in, and I honestly, I don't know how a soda stream works, but that is basically all you are doing is pumping carbon dioxide into the um, into the still wine. So this is obviously the cheapest method of doing it. So you, we can pick up sparkling wines for a very low price value. So the next way has a couple of different names to it. So this is um, basically the Charmat method. And this is what we see typically in the Prosecco wine region. Although there are uh, wineries in Prosecco that are making it in the traditional method. So this method, Charmat, is also known as Metodo Italiano, the Martinati method, the Tank method, the Cuvée Close method, okay? And it gained its name back in 1907. Um, and kind of I have an issue with calling this Charmat because what happened is Eugene Charmat made improvements on a technique that was invented by this guy here, uh, Martinotti, and he, Federico Martinotti. So he created this method and he patented it in 1895. And then here comes Eugene Charmat in 1907 and kind of just tweaks the methodology of it. And then he names it after himself. So I don't know. I think it should be Italiano. I like Metodo Italiano, or I do like the Martinati method. Uh, let's not give Charmat credit for just tweaking somebody else's idea, but that's just my, my philosophy. So in this method, yeast and sugar are added to a closed tank, typically a stainless steel tank, and enforcing the second fermentation. The tank is held under pressure, okay, so the carbon dioxide from the fermentation is forced into the wine. So this takes about one to six weeks, and keep in mind that the atmospheric pressure is, is significantly lower than in a traditional method. So for those of you who love to saber, like me, okay, it's a little dangerous to saber a Prosecco wine or a wine that is made in this tank method, okay? Uh, because it is the uh, atmospheric pressure in the bottle of a sparkling wine that is made in the traditional method that allows us to do that um, sabering safely. Now, the last and most expensive method of making bubbles is the method champenois, okay? And this is where the second fermentation actually happens inside the individual bottles of which the wine is sold. So this, that's the important aspect is that the second fermentation takes place within the bottle that they are sold. And so uh, in this situation, the wines are acquire the highest level of carbonation. So we're talking about six, almost seven atmospheres here, allowing us to do that nice saber. And this method was originated in Champagne. And remember, we can only call it Champagne if it is made in the Champagne region. And so everywhere else in the world, it can be called Method Champenois or Ancestral Method, okay? And now during this process, what happens is the base wine is decanted into bottles and fitted with a crown cap. So like the old school, you know, like a, a beer cap, okay? And now this, the traditionally what would happen is these bottles with this beer cap would go in these things in these horizontal slots called pupret uh potrites. i say that wrong um wooden racks so traditionally what would happen is a person would come in and they would hand rotate these bottles basically about 25 turns over four to six weeks and this bottle turner which is I'm going to say it wrong again, Remure, which is French for bottle turner, they would do this and they could be doing like 40,000 bottles. This was their job. Now, unfortunately, in my opinion, 
life gets more technical and as technology increases some people lose their jobs so i kind of feel bad about this but what you're looking at now is a gyro palette and today, many of the remures, the, the bottle turners, they've lost their jobs to this machine. So this machine can actually process metal racks which contain 500 bottles in a single operation. So, you know, you get it. This machine can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So all of this processing can be done at a much shorter time, which is gonna be saving that winery a lot of money and man hours okay but it's i think it's kind of sad that we've lost track of the the artistry of an individual person physically turning those bottles so after the riddling is complete right so as this is going on what we're doing is we're putting these bottles down so neck down so that those leaves are heading into that bottleneck and after the riddling is complete all of the sediment will be in that bottleneck and then we can disgorge it which means that we are getting rid of those leaves it goes shooting out and that is a pretty cool video to watch also so those are the main processes of how we get sparkling wine and i will share my little pet peeve uh, it does bother me when people say, oh, I have champagne and it's not champagne. So remember, champagne can only be made or only be called champagne if it is made in the region of champagne. Call everything else sparkling wine unless it is actually labeled Prosecco or Cava, then it's all good. But those follow that same suit. It can only be called Prosecco if it's made in that region, and it can only be called Cava if it is made in that specific DO. So call them correctly, sound fantastic, and enjoy your bubbles no matter which way you like it. Carbon dioxide injected, tank method, or traditional method. All right, have a great Tuesday. Enjoy your week. Slancha!